in the name of allah almighty the beneficent the merciful welcome to ph101 lab this is our experiment number 5 and this is the experimental demonstration part of the experiment number 5 study of variable g via pendulum so we have discussed this uh, the theory and calculations of this uh, experiment number 5 in our part 1 so before proceeding to our workstation and to experimentally demonstrate what is to experimentally demonstrate what is a variable g pendulum and how to reduce these relations and how to uh, get the time period using the uh, variable g pendulum so in the previous lecture or in the part 1 theory and calculations part i said that we have discussed that this in this table i have added some extra columns as you can see this is t1 t2 and this is t so in the previous lecture i said that the this is the time measured using the stopwatch and this is the time period calculated via the uh, time period relation as we discussed for the variable g pendulum case so that method is accurate but the problem is this was actually the time period for a single oscillation you will note this time period which is where we have a high probability of error for a single oscillation so that is why we have to repeat this experiment for many trials so for a single oscillation we can take a single value and that value may not be that much accurate that value might have some error so in order to reduce the error what we do we take trials so that's why i have added certain columns here this is uh, these three extra columns as you can see t1 t2 and t so actually what you will have to do let's say this is if this is our inclined pendulum as we discussed this is our inclined pendulum and this is the length up to the center of mass of the uh, metallic disc in this case we are having a circular metallic disc so this is the length l and this is our variable g pendulum placed on a horizontal surface now what you have to do is to for the first case 0 degree so your pendulum will be here so in the first case your pendulum is just like a simple pendulum so you will measure the alpha we have discussed is how to the, the value of the alpha can be calculated from the degree scale from here now what is t1 so actually t1 is let me draw it more simply if this is your variable g pendulum for the sake of simplicity so what will be our t1 so in order to gain much accuracy or in order to have a greater accuracy or more accuracy what you have to do is to repeat this experiment for at least 20 oscillations 30 oscillations or 50 oscillations but we will we will be doing it for 10 oscillations so t1 is actually the time measured via the stopwatch so what you have to do if this is your pendulum with a mass m now this is some point a and this is some extreme point a dash so you will move the pendulum to this position point a now what you will have to do you will release the pendulum at point a so it will start moving towards its mean position o and it will not stop at its mean position and it will go beyond the mean position to the other extreme point a dash and then it will come back to its extreme point a so this from so this oscillation from a to a dash and then back to a from a dash to a is one oscillation this is one oscillation so you have to measure the time via the stopwatch for 10 oscillations so what i mean to say is you will release the mass here it will move towards a dash and it will come back towards a so this will be your one oscillation and the and the, the time the stopwatch will tell you the time so you will turn on uh, you will start your stopwatch as you release the pendulum so this is one oscillation then this is second oscillation then this is third this is fourth this is fifth oscillation sixth oscillation seventh oscillation eighth oscillation ninth oscillation tenth oscillation so as it completes 
10 oscillations, you will stop the stopwatch. So, you will note that time, this will be your T1. This will be your T1. You will write it here. Let's say this is actually, or uh, for the first case, it will be 9.80 meter per second square. So, let's say T1 is the time for 10 oscillations. How much time is taken by the pendulum to complete 10 oscillations is T1. So, let's say it takes 12 seconds. Let's say this, it takes 12 seconds. It depends on the length of the pendulum. Now, you will have to repeat this for the second case. So, T2 is exactly the same as T1. Just you have to repeat this 10 oscillations and you will note the time. So, this will be your T2. So, you will, let's say this is now 12.04 uh, seconds. Now, this T is actually the mean time. You will add these times and divide it by 2. So, you will get the mean time. This is actually the mean time. So, let's say you get, uh, let's say you get 1.45 or something or let's say you get or let's say you get 3.156 something. You will get a value and this will be your mean time. Now, what will be the time period? So, the time period we need it for a single oscillation. So, what we will do? You will divide this T by 10 because we are doing this experiment, we are performing this experiment for 10 oscillations. So, you will divide this mean time by 10 and you will get this value. So, this will be actually your time period. So, in the first case, we can do it for a single oscillation, but our accuracy will be compromised. So, that is why we have to take certain trials. If, if these oscillations are 50, you will have more accuracy. If these oscillations are 100, you will have the accuracy will increase. So, that is why I have in inserted these extra columns to have a better uh, accuracy while you are performing this experiment. Now, this is, uh, we have discussed this one. This is simply the length of the pendulum and the alpha can be uh, determined from the degree scale. And the length, the, the length as I recommended, you can use 15 centimeter. You can use the whole length of the pendulum as well. But uh, if the instructor uh, asks you to use 15 centimeter, then you will you have to use that value. So, it depends. You can use any of the value. You can use the whole length of the pendulum. But if it is recommended to use 15 centimeter, you can use 15 centimeter. Similarly, for the second case, these three extra columns. So, this is exactly the same. You have to repeat this experiment for 10 oscillations. And how to measure the time T1 for 10 oscillations? You will move the bob or the mass 8.A, you will release it. So, it will move from A to A dash and as it comes back to A, this will be your one oscillation. So, these 10 oscillation, you will note the time for 10 oscillations, you will get T1. Repeat this for the second case, this will be your T2. Then the average will be the mean time and divide this time by, this mean time by the, by 10 because we are doing it for 10 oscillations. So, you will get the time period. And this will you, this will be actually your measured time using the stopwatch. And this is actually the time using the relation for the variable G pendulum. Now, this is very simple. Now, uh, at the end, you will have to plot a graph. And you know that how to plot a graph. So, you can also insert an extra column, another extra column for T square. As we discussed that you will plot graph between T square and L. You can also plot uh, a graph between, plot a graph between T and L 1 by 2. So, in this case, we know that for the first case and the second case. So, for the second case, uh, let us say, the second case will be some non-linear curve. This will be some non-linear curve. This will be the length L and this will be the time period. So, in this case, this is not actually the simple time. That is why we are not taking it on the x-axis because on x-axis we are taking the independent quantities. But now the time period is dependent on length. So, length is independent in this case and the time period depends on the length. So, that is why we are using the time period on the y-axis. Now, this is we have to plot this one. But for the, uh, the value of g calculation, we need this value. So, for this what we will do, we will have to square the time period values. If this is for the second case, so you will be using this, you will be using the second uh, table, you will be using the second table. So, what you have to do, you will be using the time period for the second, uh, in the second table. So, in the second table, you will get series of values for the time period and you will square them. 
so you can also uh, add an extra column at the other end i will draw it here this is this will be your t square so this will be a t square one value for the, when the length is 5 when the length is 10 you will get a t square value just square these values you will get for the 3 the serial num uh, you will get for the 15 cent centimeter length for 20 centimeter and so on so you will get t square values and you will plot a graph between t square and length and we discussed it that we will get a straight line we will get a straight line if this is t square the unit will be second square and this is centimeter so we will get a straight line and and definitely we will have some points on this straight line now we discussed the slope but now if you are for better accuracy better not to use these points for the slope calculation you can use any other point between these points for example let's let's take this point and some other random point between these points this point and calculate the slope between these two points so this will be your rise and this will be your run so this will be actually m is equal to t square by l we have discussed this in uh, we have discussed this in detail in our part 1 so this will be actually the slope of this curve and we can use it to deduce the value of g so this is basically our variable g pendulum as you can see this is our pendulum of length some length so if the mass you can move the mass shift it above or below according uh, to the length of the pendulum so if the mass is here so its length is reduced so if you can move the mass to change the length of the pendulum so it's very simple now the other thing is it's called a variable g pendulum why because at the other end you can see let me rotate this you can see here we have a screw so you can adjust it accordingly and you can change the angle or you can incline the angle at certain angle so initially our pendulum is inclined at 0 degrees so you can see that the pendulum is inclined at 0 degrees so let's say move it, move this to let me so you can see it clearly so move the pendulum let's say to 20 degrees or 30 degrees or 40 degrees as you is required so let's say it i'm uh, the angle of inclination is now 50 degrees so this is our alpha so you have to fix it at let's say 50 degrees so initially you will fix it for 0 then for 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 as we discussed in the table so now in this case this was actually our g effective component so we have discussed this in the theory and the g parallel was uh, parallel to the, as we discussed that one component of the gravitational acceleration was parallel to this axis so we will not be using that one we will be using the g effective component so we know that so this is having some mass and this is the uh, variable g pendulum now how to take the measurements we know that for the first case we will have to keep the length of the pendulum fixed for the first case we know that the length of the pendulum should be kept fixed so for, for the first case the length was 15 centimeter as as recommended so if the length is 15 centimeter so you will move the mass to 15 centimeter and how to measure the length of the pendulum we will be using a meter rod so you will have to measure the length from this fixed axis to the center of mass of this pendulum and this is about you have to to the center of mass of this pendulum keep in mind so move it a little below now it is exactly at 14.5 centimeter from this fixed support now the length is 14.5 centimeter so you have will you will have to keep it fixed throughout the first part now how to measure oscillations now what is one oscillation so actually when i move the pendulum here and i release it so it will move to this point and come back to this point so this will be our first oscillation so let me show you this is one oscillation again this is one oscillation as it moves from here and then back to here so this will be one oscillation again one oscillation two oscillations three four five six seven eight nine ten so these are ten oscillations you have to measure the time for ten oscillations as required so this will be actually time t1 
and this is actually our stopwatch as you can see this is our stopwatch so actually on the stopwatch you on the stopwatch you can see that there are certain buttons so this button is used to start and stop the stopwatch so when i press this button the time starts and when i press this the time stops so actually it's showing that the time is 2.80 seconds so actually the time is 2.80 seconds now how to measure it for 10 oscillations you will move the pendulum to some uh, extreme position not too far a little away from the mean position let's say keep it uh, fixed let's say this is at this position the extreme position is this one now as you release the pendulum you will have to measure the stop or you will you have to measure the time for 10 oscillations so if you are measuring the time t1 how to measure it as i release it as you release it press the uh, timer so the timer will start 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so the time here in the stopwatch we can see that the time is 10.64 seconds so actually that you have you will have to note this time this is 10.64 seconds so this will be our t1 similarly you will have to repeat this uh, this experiment for the second case so again you will have to measure the time for 10 oscillations This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now the time is ten point five nine seconds. Ten point five nine seconds. So this will be mean time will be equal to ten point six four seconds plus ten point five nine seconds divided by two. This will give you the mean time. So let's say the mean time can be calculated: ten point six four, ten point six four plus ten point five nine divided by two. This will be actually ten point six one five. This will be actually the mean time. And for the time period, you will divide this mean time ten point six one five divided by ten. You will get. 1.0615 seconds so you will get 1.0651 second let me show you you can see that this is the time t1 for the first case t2 for the second uh, repeating the same experiment then we will have to take the mean uh, sorry this is t this is actually our mean time this is our mean time now divide this mean time 10.615 seconds divided by 10 we will get the time period so for the first case let me repeat this experiment for the first case our pendulum is just the simple pendulum now the alpha is 0 degrees g cos alpha can be g cos alpha is equal to 0 so g will be 9.80 meter per second square now what uh, time t1 measure the time t1 for 10 oscillations then again t2 for 10 oscillations then take the mean divide sum and divide, divide by 2 you will get the mean value then divide that mean value by 10 because we are doing for 10 oscillations you will get the time period when you will get the time period not that time period uh, in the table and then also calculate the time period via the relation t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g cos alpha as we have discussed already now we will also need t square for in order to plot a graph between the t square and the length of the pendulum so better to square the values Uh, in some extra column or you can do it on some extra sheet similarly then you will have to repeat this for 10 you will have to repeat move it to the inclination is now alpha is 10 degree repeat this experiment for 10 then for 20 30 40 and then you will finally reach 80 degrees and you will have to repeat this experiment for 80 degree so this is very simple at the end you will plot a graph so if you know the theory and calculations part of this experiment you can easily do it so this is actually the 
simple this is not actually the simple pendulum it is the variable g pendulum so in the second part what you will have to do you will change the length and keep the alpha to be at 70 degrees in the second part you will keep it fixed at 70 degrees as we discussed and then you will keep on changing the length so in the second part you will keep on changing the length in the second part you will keep on changing the length so initially if your mass is at 5 cm you will repeat the experiment and fill the second table as we discussed then then um, change the length the angle should be kept fixed then this will be 10 cm then this will be 15 20 and let's say 25 let's say 30 so this will you will be your actually the length of the pendulum changes so your time period value will change and that is why this was actually the purpose of this experiment in the first part we were discussing the time period as a function of the angle so we will we will have to fix the length in the first case and that was 15 centimeter in the second case we will keep the length at 70 uh, keep the angle of inclination fixed let's say 70 degrees and then we will keep on changing the length and we will check the effect on the time period so at the end you will plot a graph between t square and l and also you have to calculate the percentage difference between the uh, actual value of g and the calculated value of g via the uh, variable g pendulum so thank you so very much for watching my lectures